odds and ends this week. Mostly I have been sewing thanks stuff, which I will show briefly, but not in detail because I don't know. Well, it's the stuff for John. John, I don't know if you want to be surprised or if you even have time to watch these videos, so I will let you know when I show the things. Um, uh, where to start? Random odds and ends. Oh, and now I showed you this doll last week. This is cloth, mostly cloth, that I got from that doll person who had the big D stash a few weekends ago when I had doll people over. And, you know, like this warm reddish chestnutty brown really isn't the kind of color that I normally go for. But, you know, dolls wear things that I won't. But I really like mixing this with the purple. And there was one of the pieces of cloth that I took from the D stash that was that warm reddish brown with light purple. And maybe that's what inspired me to do this. But I used that cloth to make a shirt. I'm still working on that shirt pattern, in theory. <laughs> I have used what I've done so far on it to make shirts, but the shirts I'm making are like this shirt. I'm already doing variations, so I don't have quite enough cloth to make the whole shirt. Like this one, I made it shorter than the pattern calls for, and I replaced the sleeves with lace. Well, this one, the cloth was in strips, none of them were quite wide enough to do the whole front, so I pieced the sides on here and I decided to put this lace in the seams. And then this skirt is also from the doll person's de stash, and there technically wasn't really quite enough of it to make this, so I don't know if you can see in the back here, and there's thread everywhere because I've been sewing so much. It's pieced here in the back just to make it quite wide enough. So that was another outfit I sewed, still for my own dolls. I sewed several things for my own dolls before I realized, you no, know, I'm in a sewing mood. I should start sewing the thanks things that I owe so many people. I have a list. If I owe you thanks, or if said I owe you thanks, even if you said I don't owe you anything, I still want to thank you, it's on a list. I will get to it eventually. But then, of the dolls I showed you that I thrifted last week, including the AA Creata Flower Princess Ballerina Leanna doll, I discovered that the darker Liv Daniela body is a reasonably good match for that head, which has so much lint on it because it's been stored behind my sewing machine. So I got that head on this body, and then I used the cocoon dress pattern that I shared and some more of the doll person's de-stash cloth to make this dress for her. And I went ahead and gave her purple accessories just so she could fit into this same general color scheme. And all of this I'm sewing with light, well no, all this had light purple thread. I sewed something else, and then for this I switched to a blue, and then I sewed a whole bunch of stuff for John with the blue. Uh, one thing I do want to say about this skirt, I made the skirt before the shirt, and originally the skirt had some lace on it, and I did not like the way it looked. So instead of doing the proper thing, which would be to pick out the top stitching and the stitching and take the lace off, I just used my scissors and cut really close to the edge of the skirt, which isn't that close, so. I don't know if you can see how really horribly ragged the hem of that skirt is. But, you know, from here you can't see it, right? All the way across the internet? The stuff I make is not perfect by a long shot. I, I know I've said it before, when I create a pattern to share, that is way more um, attention to detail than the stuff that I sew for my own dolls. It's like this skirt, I took my chief skirt that I'd used to make her skirt, and I just angled it out, and it's way too wide in the front, and of course, like I said, I didn't have quite enough cloth in the back, so it's narrow in the back, but, but it looks okay in pictures. I would never say this is great doll sewing, but it is finished doll sewing. So since I had the purple in my machine, I was just looking for other light purple stuff that I could sew with light purple thread, 
And so I'm digging randomly through my giant pile of cloth that's in an open suitcase over there. It's Susan cloth and thrift grab bag cloth and the doll person t stash cloth and just all sorts of cloth that people have sent me. And so there's enough stuff there that some other stuff is getting sort of forgotten about. So I dug down into it and rediscovered some cloth from a thrift store grab bag, which I was in a thrift store the other day. I resisted the grab bags. One of them had a knit in it that I really wanted, but that wasn't worth $8 for the whole bag. And then the other bag was color of the week, so it would have been $4 for this giant bag of cloth, and it looked there was some fun stuff in it, but I knew that I needed not to buy it. I'm not always going to be that strong. So this thrift store grab bag of cloth, thrift store cloth grab bag, had um, some strips of polar fleece type cloth left in it, this sort of swirly pastel that I thought would be okay for a doll jacket. There was enough of it that I figured I could make a quarter scale or third scale doll jacket, but I just, I want to sew for six scale. I did not want to sew for the 60 centimeter doll or the 45 centimeter doll. So I used about half of what was there to make a jacket and I made it, um, I used a Ken shirt and just kind of improvised around the Ken shirt to make this jacket for the female doll size. And I didn't like it because I didn't line it so the insides were really sloppy and what I tried for the pockets, my top stitching was really sloppy and I just, but then I put it on the doll and I suddenly liked it. Cosmo Moore made this shirt. I made this a while ago. These, I think these are live leggings, but these were from that doll person's D stash. These are Barbie shoes from the 90s, so I think Queen of Squid sent me this specific pair. The socks, I'm, I'm one of those people who tends to remember where every bit of clothes comes from. The socks are from in the early 2000s when Integrity Toys was still making Playline dolls. They did this line of smaller, more like brats, their kind of version of brats type stuff with the smaller bodies and big heads. The dolls had a zodiac theme, and the Gemini doll was one doll with like reversible, I forget it was a two skirts or a reversible skirt, so you could pretend that one character was dressed in pink and one character was dressed in blue, but it's the same doll. Those are the socks from that. And this bag is from the Clueless dolls from the 90s, and I have had it since then, so this could be older than some of the people watching this video. And this, actually this sticker also, I was at a doll meeting before the kid I was born, so over 10 years ago. And I forget what I gave that person, but she sent me some doll shoes and a page of little tiny stickers, puffy stickers in the mail, and I like to put the puffy stickers on like they're pins. So, there's that, but this also, since I used a Ken size shirt, this jacket can fit smaller male dolls. And I thought, no, I'd like to give John this jacket, but I don't want to give John this jacket because this jacket is terrible. I mean, here's how the inside looks. That just, that just bothers me. I know it's actually fine, is no problem, but unlined jackets bug me. So I made it again, and here, John, if you're watching, you want to look away. So I made this. Same basic idea. I took a Ken shirt and improvised around it. And instead of the pockets being a big applied thing on the top, I just did this kind of pocket. We put another piece under it and top stitched them together. And I actually, even though this was made of what was left over after I made this one, I think I actually like the color swirls better on this one, although there's more pink on this one. So that was one thing for John's dolls. And I actually sewed a bunch of other random things. I'll go ahead and show the others for John's dolls. Because I know some of you have expressed curiosity about the thanks sewing. And on the one hand, I want to keep the stuff a surprise from the people. But that's why I'm saying you can look away if you're John and don't want to see it. If you're John and do want to see it, it's fine. But 
This took me two tries to make. The first try, I used the edges of the actual original garment to try to make the edges of this garment, and it was just too bulky, so I went back and used a different part of the garment. And so that's Ken size. And this is Francie size. This is Susan cloth. This is cloth from the Doll Person's D stash. Susan cloth. This is for the Francie size dolls. This is Doll Person D stash cloth entirely. I mean, you might kind of get that idea that all this stuff came from other people because this isn't my normal color palette. But. I think it works. And then this is also for the guys. It's pretty obnoxious. I don't know if John's dolls will actually wear this, but if they're desperate, they'll have something. Okay, so that was the stuff I made for John's dolls. And then there were other random things I've sewn from the D-Stash, doll person's D-Stash cloth. There were a few pieces of sheer polyester. And I sewed this one with the purple thread when I still had the purple thread in the machine is like twice as wide and I folded it over and stitched it around or folded it over right sides together stitched it most of the way around left to hold to turn it through turned it right side out and then top stitched all around and there's two more pieces of this same weight of cloth over there ready to turn into more scarves but I just need to get white or off-white thread in my machine which is what I'm prepared to do I think I'm almost out over the course of sewing the stuff with blue, I actually used up the last bits on a couple spools. So, but that's always on the inside, the top stitching for everything. Who is this blue? So I would get the off-white or white thread swapped in. I had some candy corn, so my mind's brain's kind of racing in all directions right now. Sorry if I'm more scatterbrained than usual. But I will get more scars made just because I like having doll scars even if most of the time I forget that I have them and don't put them on dolls. And then this also from the Dollsters person's D stash cloth. There's just enough to make this, although I am seriously tempted to pick apart the back seam, even though it's serge, which makes it extra pain to pick apart, but it's not very long, so it's okay. And pick apart the waistband and re-sew it so instead of being elasticized it has a back opening because this is just this is polyester and I'm just not good with sewing synthetic stuff so this just has this weird weird shape and I'm not sure if it would have a better shape if I gave it a proper waistband without the elastic doing all its random elastic things at the top there so with that in mind when I sewed this skirt I did make a back opening even though this is a super white super lightweight cotton. I just wanted to do a fastening waistband instead of elastic. And this was on... It was obvious that some of the things from the doll person's de-stash doll cloth offerings had been clothes. And I think this had been a shirt, so this actually was part of this orange. But I cut it off and re-sewed it because I'm picky about that kind of thing. It's just the way it was originally attached, it was too bulky. But actually, I left it on this one because this is for quarter scale dolls, so it's it's okay if it's a little bulky. And obviously, also did elastic in the waistband there, and there's thread everywhere in here. I've just been sewing and sewing and sewing and not really taking the time to clean up after myself, and the floor is just thread city. And. I had the Olmec Imani doll on my desk all week just looking at her, getting used to the way she looks because she does have kind of an unexpected sculpt, but I'm finally, I got, I, I can see what they're going for, kind of a Donna Summer disco type look. And I think really the problem with her is her makeup. Her paint is just so poorly done. It's really irregular around the teeth, and the eyes aren't quite... The, the edges on the paint and the eyes, one eye, there's like this big blob of browns on the other side, and her eyebrows are off-center. So I think I might repaint her, but I'm not sure. Not now, because I'm sewing. 
and not sure how I will try to repaint her. But the other thing was, I was thinking was if I was going to repaint her, I'd want her to have a better body, but what body is going to match her skin tone? And then I remembered that Kenya's World body that Eric sent me a while ago, and it's not a great match, but I think it's a pretty good match. So I do think, like I said, I will repaint her eventually, because I think her, her problem is just this paint is terrible. Actually, I went to the thrift store today, there was another one of this doll in there, in a box. And I think that's how come this one was still in such good shape and was only missing her shoes, as well as that creative flower princess, who was only missing one belly shoe. I think they had probably been in boxes, and the boxes were in terrible shape, so they took them out to put them on sale. But this one was in the box, and she had an extra outfit, and the, her clothes are terrible quality. <laughs> and they had $5 on her. It cheaped out. I'm going to wait and see since, again, she is not a, she doesn't have a modern doll aesthetic. So I'm guessing kids would not want a doll like this. So I'll see if she's still around in a while. Or there might be people who buy her because, oh, old doll in a box, she must be worth something. And, you know, I don't need more dolls. And also, in the thrift store today, I thought this was interesting. I was looking at the cloth, which I don't need to. You know, next week and the week after next, our fall break, which means the kiddo will be home. I don't take him shopping. He's just... I respect the fact that he doesn't like to go shopping. And I remember the fact that I don't need to go shopping. So when he's home from school, I don't go fun shopping. I do take him grocery shopping and... He, he likes that more than he admits, because he gets choice. Anyway, on the cloth rack, there was a craft panel. I didn't get it because it was really stained, but I looked at it, and it had this print on it, which I got this cloth from Susan, and it had this print on it, which I got this print from the doll person's D-stash. So I just think it's really interesting that I have ended up with two prints from the same collection from who knows how long ago. Well, it amuses me. And the only other doll thing I have done is John asked me about my sa Bandai... I'm not sure if it's pronounced Sakurana or Sakurana, because I don't know Japanese. I know enough to know that I don't know it. So I had the doll out and John asked about how her head would look on other bodies. So I tried that for him. So I had the doll out and thought, you know, I have not changed this doll's clothes for a long time. So I first, well, first I thought I would make some clothes for her since I've been making so many clothes, but I obviously didn't. I mean, Buff Grandpa is still sitting back there naked waiting for some clothes and the hip hoodie guy is still back there in his fancy shirt and boxer shorts waiting for me to make clothes. Just haven't been able to make, in the mood to make those clothes. I've been in the mood to actually thank people with clothes. We'll see how long this lasts. Anyway, so I grabbed her Sakurana. And I made this dress years ago for a dynamite girl. And I really messed up on these cuffs and this dress only fits dolls whose hands could come off. Anybody else's hands will not fit through these. So I thought, well, let me see if Sakurana's removable hand body will fit in this dress. And as you can see, it does. I wanted to put her in blue tights and the gray shoes, but I don't know who's wearing the gray shoes, the little lace-up gray ankle boots I got from Mimi Wu. Somebody's wearing them, I don't know who. Actually, yes, I do. It's, I think it's Pratima. I guess this is where I got the idea for the blue tights and the gray shoes from. So in the, the other pair of blue tights I had didn't fit on this body anyway, so I got two pairs of these tights. I don't know who makes these tights, you see they don't quite fit this doll. This isn't a Barbie type of construction because it has this underwear piece and because the seams are on the inside of the leg. Barbie tights, the seams are always on the back side of the leg, and I do, someday, I'm going to share my pattern for that because I've been making tights for Barbies and dolls with the seam on the back for years, and I just think that 
it's a cool way to do it because then the seam doesn't end up wandering around to be visible at the front so easily. I have ideas for things to do, I just don't always do them. So anyway, whatever these are from, this is from the doll person's stash. And then since these boots were being used, I just looked around for other boots to fit her larger pseudo action figure size feet. So I pulled out this old pair of action figure boots. So I haven't taken pictures of her yet. I have taken pictures of most of these dolls. I realized I had not taken a proper picture of her. I took a really quick picture of them together. I haven't put it on Instagram yet. And it's in really low light. It's not a good picture. And of course, I know it's October, and I really should do some more work on her as well as my other spoopy dolls, but... I also have acquired the materials to start making the child's Halloween costume. So there's all this sewing I should be doing. And we'll see if I actually do any of it. And um, I think that's enough rambling for now. Thanks for watching.